The Xbox Drive is powered by patrons at patreon.com slash Yumi Capri. And I want to say thank you to all of our patrons over there, especially our Diamond executive producers, Jonathan Brown and Slimer Snarf, our Platinum producer, Dallas Ford, and our Gold members, Argo, Ashley Nicholson, James Johnson, Gene Kay, Marcus O'Neill, Skinny Matt, Trucker Sloth, and Xavier Reyes. Thank you, everybody, for all of your support. Hey everyone, it's me, Sean Capri. I'm in my car and you're listening to the most horsepowerful podcast on the internet. It's the Xbox Drive. I'm on a Skype call with my friend, Ryan Turford. He's the man on the moose and on our journey today. There's a couple things that happened, but it's an amazing time to be an Xbox fan. So jump on into the Xbox Drive. Ball, blah, 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 under the century, ball. Greater than X. Well, hello, Sean Capri. Well, hello, Ryan Turford. It is a delight to talk to you today. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. Your little intro kind of broke my brain because I was like, wait, nothing happened? Am I the only one who's crazy thinking only that a couple this, things. this might have been a big week? But I don't know. Oh, Maybe my gosh. Thing. Jumbo size Xbox drive this time. We got to get a, we got to like a, got to pick up a spare tire because there's just so much, there's so much happening, man. We got to, we got to get extra room. I don't even know. I'm out of car puns for today, but uh, I'm excited to talk to you, my friend. I'm glad that you're giving people a little heads up because we, we've gotten feedback about that where people like us to warn people if the episode's mm-hmm. going to go a little bit longer than normal. And guess what, folks? You've probably already noticed on your podcast feed or your YouTube timeline, this episode's a little bit longer than normal this week because uh, we got we got a lot of stuff to talk about. So it's a jumbo sized Xbox drive this week. Oh, it's nice exciting, one. Folks. I mean, I'm just thinking back to the days of jumbo video, Sean, and that was nice. getting inspired. I don't know okay? what that is. Okay, Although sure. I was, it's funny, Sean, I was looking at, uh, because I'm, I'm moving in a, in a few weeks, and I noticed the place I'm moving to has a jumbo video that still does rentals. Oh, I'm I love it. I'm very excited about this. Mm, you're moving to the right have, place then. I'm going to have to go pay them a visit. But enough about that, Sean. All right. I'm going to grab my A-Tracks and pop them in because it's time for the playlist because yes. we got to go. We got to get going with this or else <laughs> we're going to be here all day. Um Let's talk quickly about the games we've been playing. Sean, did you play anything really this week? We played something similar. I didn't tell you about it. It's a a little bit of a surprise, Ryan Turford. Uh, But one of the big things that we're alluding to is this whole Outrider situation. Uh, It's a demo that came out a little while ago, and it was just revealed, spoilers, that it's coming to Game Pass. And so I'm like, I wasn't really all that interested in trying the demo. I mean, like, I've got a lot of games to play, and Ed Placencia said he was kind of middling on it, so I was like, I'm not really sure about this one. But then it's coming to Game Pass. I'm like, I should probably check out yeah. this little demo. And Ryan Turford, yeah. the little demo is actually pretty good. <laughs> it actually is actually, actually pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's sort of like... Um, like Square Enix's sci-fi opus with some like division and gears of war kind of things, but magic abilities attached and cool skill trees. It's, it's like essentially Square Enix Destiny. Just say what it. Just the say crap? It. Like, a third-person cover base, dude. This game, this game could be big. This game, like I'm actually really, really enjoying it. I haven't, I haven't let he, uh, hit my max level on on the demo, but I'm pretty far along. I've beaten a couple captains. I chopped mm-hmm. some guy's head off, and dude, like, I, I think this is. I, I have. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to know what um, what class or, or specialty or whatever you've chosen. I've chosen. This may surprise you. The uh, what the hell is he called? He's he's close ranged, and the I trickster? can. Trickster, trickster. I knew it was with a T. And is that what you chose or did you choose something different? No. So first of all, I actually have had t- had a chance to play all four classes yep. through the oh, demo just, just to try them. I didn't, okay. I didn't max level all of them, but the one I actually went, because I have one max level character, the max level in the demo is level seven for those that haven't played it. Um, I'm playing as the Technomancer, which is kind of the long range Character. Yeah, because that's kind of my specialty when it comes to a lot of games like long range support is kind of my specialty. And that's what the Technomancer is all about. You uh, basically specialize in sniper rifles, but you also have like a turret that can freeze people. And you also have this like uh, Sam missile launcher that shoots yeah. a whole bunch of missiles across the screen uh, and you get all kinds of cool like long range support abilities to help your allies. So um, that was a class I really enjoyed, but I played all four of them and I think they all feel like really well balanced. That was my my one takeaway from each one and all feel like really unique from each other. Mm -hmm. Um, My least favorite probably is like the tanking one. Um, yeah. which I'm, I'm blanking on, but that's just, that's outside, kind of outside my comfort zone as far as the type of role I like to play in, in the a group. 
when sure. we're playing a shooter like that this. Might be, that was, I hover between that one and, and Trickster because I do like to just go like guns a blaze and just like somebody else cover me. Like you and I would actually be a really good team on this because as a Trickster, it's short range stuff. I'm I'm creating like bubbles around me where it's basically bullet time and everything's in slow motion. So it gives me a lot of safety. And if any of the enemies are trapped in there with me, they move in slow motion. I can punch them in the face or I can unleash all my other abilities and I'm going to get a drink while I'm talking about this game. Probably is not the best podcasting thing, but that's okay. But, I, oh, they got this thing that, like, is automated that asked me to, like, download the app first, Ryan. It's super. That's very Hang on. It's coming. Hi there. Can I please just get a large Diet Coke today? Okay. That's all. Thank you. Um, Ryan, I want to play this game with you, though. Like, I could be in there, and I'm causing, like, these space-time bubbles and making everybody slow down, and I am I can uh, almost, like, do, like, a Dishonored type of blink ability yeah. where, I, where I appear right behind them, and then I punch them in the face or on the back or the spine, and then they dissolve. It's, um, the abilities is really empowering. It's like these, you end up in these uh, combat situations where you're completely outnumbered, and you feel like a total badass. You can take down all these swarms of people, and there's definitely a specific way the game wants you to play, but I am here for that, man. Yeah, I love the trickster teleport ability. It's like my favorite thing to do, especially if you've got a shotgun. You just teleport mm-hmm. right behind someone, Aye. just shotgun in them, them in the face. Um, or using their sword ability, too, which too. It, it just slices a whole bunch of enemies in half, and then they turn into skeletons. Yes! Like, it, Dude! Like, it's, it's so over the top, and I love it, Sean. Okay, so gameplay, classes. Like I feel like we're almost doing like a full-on like review kind of situation here, but this... Um, and I'm well, not all positive on it. I'm hyped about it. I am, I am pretty hyped about it, but there's like... Uh, no, I want to stay on the hype train. Um, the lore is actually really insane. Thank you. Like, th- like it's awful. Like, the world yeah. is terrible. Like, terrible things are happening to all these people, and it just keeps getting worse and worse. But um, I guess maybe I'm kind of, like, that's the one thing. I-, I-, I need a cheery game right now. Like, it's been, life's been a little bit rough these last little, these last couple weeks. And I'm playing this game, I'm like, is this really what I need right now? But the gameplay seems to be very, very satisfying. But, Ryan, these people are in for a rough road, my friend. I mean, do you really need a game right now where the very first line it gives you from the lore is the earth is dead. The world has <laughs> been destroyed. <laughs> and it's just like, and it just, and it just goes on this like really sad tale about how they, these, the humans basically had to leave earth to go find mm-hmm. other planets. But then they go to other planets that are just as messed up as earth. And it's just like, huh, it's, it's certainly interesting from the lore side. I mean, I'm personally not really in love with the story that we've seen so far. And again, um, the, this is very early on in the game. The demo is literally the first hour of the game itself. Yep. Um, and then everything else after that, you know, it might turn around like the story itself might actually be a lot better as you play through it. But I think separate um, the story from the delivery. I think some of the acting and some of like the, I don't know, some, maybe some of the performances are like, like it, um, maybe intentionally bad in that sci-fi kind of way. Like, well, if you thought that you were tough, then you're nothing compared to this other tough guy. It's kind of like that kind of stuff, like almost Starship Trooper Z. But like, the, I'm actually kind of in, from the sci-fi standpoint, I'm kind of intrigued to like, what the hell is happening? Like, what is yeah. this world? And I'm not sure how many of those answers I've yet to discover within the demo, but kind of, it's kind of got me there. But I'm laughing at some of the delivery on on the yeah. performances. Yeah, for sure. I can see the appeal of that. Again, it's very like almost like 90s action movie esque, but it's like a, a mm-hmm. trying to be a little more intelligent than something like that. As far as the performances are concerned, it's very yeah, much a like, little bit. Like you said, like Starship Troopers or something like that. Like it's kind of cheesy, but in a in a fun way, I think. Uh, yeah. So yeah, yeah I, I I actually really enjoyed my time with very the demo. Very surprised. And I'm, and I'm gonna throw it out there too for anyone who's listening to this. If you are interested in this game at all, if you feel like you're going to play this game. You should play the demo because it yeah. is the first hour of the game and all of your progress carries over to the full game when mm-hmm. you get it on Game well, Pass. Well, you get it on Game which, Pass. Yes, yeah. you don't even have to buy it. Oh, my exactly, gosh. Exactly. So you get your head start now. So you may as well get that out of the way now because then you won't have to play through the prologue again, which is kind mm-hmm. of a, a long kind of, I don't know. It, I didn't really find the prologue super interesting. I, I would say it's like kind of boring. But yeah, that means no, you also I, don't have to go back and play it over and over again. Well, and then definitely, you've you've had that t- that experience four times over, it, and it's not the I thought I was just jumping into a dumb shooter, and, and I got all this. You know, it's very much a Square Enix type of thing. I got the exact same thing with the Project Triangle strategy demo on Switch a couple of weeks yeah. ago, but it did like 
already even within the demo, I felt like it was starting to pay off. Like all of the the groundwork that it was laying. Like there's a lot of lore building to this, and even diving into the menus, you can you can find out more about these characters and these worlds and the the creatures that are inhabiting Enoch, which is the new world that that you're trying to get everybody to. It's really really quite interesting. Uh, Want to throw a shout out to really anybody who chooses to pay for this game or plays on PlayStation. You're still welcome to play with us, even though uh, I wouldn't. You know, it's cross play. It's you cross play. play. It's checking off all the boxes, Ryan. Like, good for Square on this. Like, can I ask you a question? And I'm going sure. to. Um, had you heard of this game before? <laughs> like, I didn't yeah. even know this was coming. This was a game that was actually on my radar because I actually, this isn't the first time I played the demo. I played the demo when the demo launched because I was actually pretty excited about this game. What? I was thinking about, it was on my short list of games to play coming up, uh, especially because we didn't have a lot of games. What radar? When See? did you hear about this? Like, oh, I, I heard about this like a year and a half ago. And we, I think we talked about it on the show before. It was, in fact, actually, and people who know me know this, I listen to a lot of Final Fantasy fourteen podcasts when I'm not listening to the show. And the reason why that's important is because a lot of the people who put those podcasts together are Square Enix influencers who actually were invited to go play this game early. And then that's who I heard the word from on Outriders early. Was Interesting. Because a lot of... Yeah, that was how they announced the game in the first place, was they announced it through a lot of Square Enix influencers mm. that I listened to through podcasts based on other Square Enix games. So that's how that's how I've been paying attention to this game for a while. Um, and it probably in a busier month, it probably wouldn't have been a day one purchase for me. But yeah. in April, where there's no games, you better believe like I had my eye uh -huh. on this game as to something well, you, to pick you, up. And now I don't even have to think about it because it's on Game Pass, which is you awesome. know me. Like I've been, I've been like I've got lots of games to play. The backlog is real, and game we're gonna get into this. Like there's tons of games coming onto Game Pass, and the Bethesda thing, and everything's happening. I've been like, so I heard this game was coming, and I'm like, I never heard of it. It's not hitting my radar. Like I think I even said like last week, like okay. Outriders, sure, people are somehow excited about this. But I'm like, I played it, and I think other people should play it too, and it's going to be on Game Pass. So I've completely, I've done a complete 180 on this because last week I was very dismissive about this game. But this week it's a little bit different, my friend. Yeah, and honestly, th with this move from Square Enix, I'm like, it still boggles my mind looking at this situation and under not understanding why Avengers is not on Game Pass. Like, this, right. this type of game as service game that needs a large, large dedicated community, like how how could you not find a better fit than Game Pass for that? Because we've seen that pay off with games like The Elder Scrolls Online. It's just where a matter there's of time, just a Ryan. Huge community there, um, and it's mostly because of Game Pass. Like it'll come. We talked about that during the roundtable. Like I would love to have seen like Square Enix do that with Avengers uh, when that launched and. I'm glad that they decided to do this without writers because I think this game, because it wasn't on a lot of people's radars, I think a lot of people would have honestly missed this game. Um, yeah. Now it, it sounds like it's going to have a really big player base. Not only that, but this is also good news for people on other consoles because they're because the game is fully cross play. There's going to mm -hmm. be so many more people to match up with if you're yep. playing on another console because there are so many people playing on Game Pass. So, dude, huge. It's, it's a win win, I think, for Square Enix. So I'm, I'm very glad that, that this is a thing. Sean, but uh, we're going to move off the Outrider stock because we're 12 minutes into the show. we got so much other stuff to talk about. we got a couple before, things. That's it, right? Before we go into the breaking news real quick, I just wanted to say I'm playing the Outer Worlds. There was a 60 frames per second patch Ooh, that came out this yes, week. Yes, good for you. Um, but I'll talk about that next week because the DLC just came out today and I haven't had a chance to play it yet. So Maybe I'll uh, play a little of that too. I've been, it's been, man, there's so many updates that are happening in all these games I've been wanting to get to. I might be right with you on that, Ryan Turfer. It, it plays way better now. Like the, the load times are way faster. Yeah. Um, it, it, it looks buttery smooth at that new frame rate. But again, I'll talk more about that next week because we're slamming the brakes on this conversation. Oh. It's time for some breaking news, Sean. <laughs> I was going to jump in, but all right, man, you go. We got, we, we got a lot of news this week, Sean. Good, so go ahead. Of, now, first up, we touched on Bethesda joining Xbox on last week's show, but yep. that was before the roundtable happened. And the mm. roundtable happened on Thursday, where it was like an hour and 20 minutes of basically Phil Spencer, Aaron Greenberg, and a bunch of Bethesda people sitting down and kind of introducing each one of the Bethesda studios, as well as basically talking about the future of Bethesda and Xbox. And we didn't really get any game announcements per se, but we did get this clarification on exclusivity from Phil Spencer. And I'm going to actually read this quote verbatim and then we yep. can kind of dissect it together that's so, how we wanted you to do it phil spencer says in quotes i'm trying to be as clear as uh, as clear as i possibly can so obviously i can't sit here and say that every bethesda game is going to be exclusive 
We know that's we know that's not true. There are contractual obligations that we're going to see through as we do in each one of these instances. We have these games that exist on other platforms and we're going to support these games on the platforms they're on. But if you're an Xbox customer, the thing I want you to know is that this is about delivering great exclusive games for you that ship on platforms where Game Pass exists. That's our goal. That's why we're doing this. And that's the root of this partnership that we're building. So, Sean, we've seen a lot of people run with this quote this week, Sean, and, and kind of dis dissect the quote and kind of fit, trying to read between the lines of are these games exclusive or are these not? Because this is kind of a long witted explanation that doesn't like give yes or no to specific games. Mm -hmm. So what do you think this quote signifies, Sean? Do you think this actually means all Bethesda games are exclusive that are not games that already exist on other platforms? Here's what we should be doing, Ryan. We should be setting out a like some sort of like bingo card, and everybody's gonna have to guess which game is gonna be exclusive and which game is gonna be cross-platform and whatever else. And we'll do a we'll do some sort of prize at the end of this. But here's here's kind of like where I land on this. I feel like uh, when he talks about legacy games or anything like that, that's Elder Scrolls. And and I, I should also say, like I think a lot of people have said this as well. This is not unique to me. Um, mm -hmm. Elder Scrolls Online is going to continue to be available everywhere. Um, but the next Doom game is going to be exclusive to Xbox. The next Fallout game is going to be exclusive to Xbox. The next Elder Scrolls game is going to be exclusive to Xbox. Starfield will be exclusive to Xbox. Um, and the games that they said are going to be on PlayStation, of course, will be on on PlayStation. Like I don't think that it actually gets much more complicated than that. Um, but yeah, legacy doesn't refer to legacy franchises. It refers to games that are ongoing. Fallout 76 will yeah. continue to be playable on on the other systems as well. And it'll just be it'll be interesting to see any other game that is like that that they introduce in terms of like massively multiplayer online games. Like any MMO games that are like Fallout 76 or anything like that, it'll be very interesting to see if that's worthwhile to keep only on Xbox or perhaps, and he said, like where Xbox Game Pass exists. So they could launch a new, like the Fallout 76 version of whatever Starfield ends up having to be, um, or Doom or whatever. They could apply that same formula to one of the other uh, franchises. And it'd be interesting to see if it's enough to do like console, Xbox, and PC and cloud. But I don't know. I, am I clear enough on saying that, like in terms of my uh, my estimation on this situation? Yeah, I think so. I, I, I think that for the most part, what you're saying makes a lot of sense from the, the quote itself. Um, and I'm personally kind of in a very similar camp with you where I think that, yeah, I mean, for the most part, anything that's legacy that he mentions is a games that are already available on the platforms. Like they're not going to remove anything like you're not going to they're right. not going to remove like Doom 2016 Doom Eternal. Yeah. From, the, from the PlayStation store or anything like that. And they're going to be awful. Some, Can you imagine? <laughs> that would be really bizarre. Catastrophic. Um, and, and likewise, they're not going to remove uh, a game like the Elder Scrolls Online or Fallout 76. They're going to continue to support that. Mm -hmm. That sounds like that. That's what they, they intentionally um, w meant by this quote. Um, yeah. but I, I also got a hint in here of contractual obligations where yes, we already know the two with death loop and Ghostwire Tokyo mm -hmm. that are exclusives. Um, I suspect there might be one or two games that we don't know about yet. What about Indiana Jones? That was the one I was about to bring up. It's, I mm -hmm. think maybe Indiana Jones might be the one game that was that because it's a Disney game. Uh, even though we saw it with Spider-Man that Sp Sony was allowed an exclusive with Spider-Man, that it might that might not be the case with Indiana Jones. Like they might have signed a contract with Disney to make it like pl platform agnostic, essentially. Yeah. Make it a, thir a third party game. So that's the one game that I point to that maybe um, that we know about that might still be cross platform because they yeah. might because they signed that deal uh, during the time when Microsoft couldn't actually do anything with this essentially that during that uh, the window where they had purchased them but hadn't actually acquired them yet so, yeah yeah it's um, still questionable on, on that one so yeah like aside from him giving that rundown you know and, and maybe that's kind of like what people wanted out of that round table was like here's a screenshot <laughs> check yeah. marks for the ones that are going to be exclusive x's or i don't know however you want to do it uh green circles or red circles um but i assume that we're going to be getting that soon enough right like i i do think that <laughs> that fans do deserve that level of clarity. And it's just like, what is the right form for that? Is that a blog post? That probably is exactly what it will be. Just to yeah. say like, here's the deal. Cause that's, I, I, we're, we're all, t I just want to fight about it. I'm interested. I think I've mentioned that before, but um, yeah, that's kind of my take on, on his quote. Yeah. Especially with E3 coming up too. And we know that they have like a, a e they've already announced at the round table, 
that there's going to be a Bethesda E3 showcase of some kind. Well, what about this news. rumored event? Like Jeff Grubb says there's an event coming out too um, uh, in March. I yeah. I don't put I too don't much know. credit in that Jeff Grubb guy. What is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> he joking, seems to be course. right we a lot. Jeff. We, yeah. we love Jeff on this show. So, I mean, yeah, I'm sure that he's probably correct, but he made it sound like it's a small event coming up. Whereas again, yeah. Bethesda was very like, um, Pete Hines made it mm -hmm. very clear that the next time we're hearing about Bethesda announcements, it's probably going to be E3 time. He said, so yeah, I would imagine that it's going to be the summer before we hear anything new from the Bethesda deal. If we hear anything like if there's an a, a Xbox event coming up, I imagine that's going to be for other Xbox exclusives that maybe we didn't ha, don't know about from yeah. Microsoft game studios or even small, some of the smaller games, like maybe to announce release dates for like bright memory, infinite or scorn um, or any of the games like we got that from the showcases last year that don't have release dates yet. So, but I mean like Ryan, like they've, they've, we've talked about this before, but like they have bought basically an E3 like presentation with Bethesda. Yep. And I'll be so interested to see like as, as the worlds kind of like merge in, like how they treat that. Like, do they have Bethesda directs essentially, or do they just like, does it merge in with all of the other Xbox stuff or does, does Bethesda still continue to kind of like be presented and promoted on its own? I love seeing Bethesda highlighted and spotlighted within the, within the store on Xbox and in the apps, it seems to be there. And, uh, I'm just curious as how, how they're going to handle that moving forward. Does, does Bethesda get its own time slot, you know, or a, a dedicated mm -hmm. amount of time? I can't decide what I even want there too, because I do feel like it takes a lot of pressure off of Bethesda to maybe have a show that maybe they didn't always need every single year. You know, they've had years where they're great and other years you're like, you guys maybe could have taken this year off. So yeah. now blended with the rest of Xbox game studios. I don't know. I don't know that they need that anymore. So I'll be interested to see. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I actually don't think that they, I think that unless they've got a ton to announce, I don't think they need to do their own shows. I think it would be interesting to, to have them as part of Inside Xbox. Yeah. Because if anything, sometimes we get lo very long Inside Xboxes that could either be shorter or just not even exist. But now yeah. with Bethesda, if you they added those together, like I think those shows probably would actually flow a little bit better. So It's going to get punchy, man. Yeah, it's going to yeah. get really good. I should also mention really quick, uh, we didn't really do any shout outs or cleaning the garage or anything. I was on the Xbox Empire, the, Ooh. I would say, tied for first best Xbox podcast on the internet. Actually, you know what? It is the best Xbox podcast on the internet. Uh, I was uh, um, invited to join those guys, uh, Donnie and Elaine, last week. So everybody, if you haven't already, please Please check out the Xbox Empire because we were able to explore this um, quite a bit more. Yeah. And and just, yeah, Donnie and Elaine are amazing. So you guys should already be listening to this show and that show every single Thursday. Yeah, for sure. I know you guys uh, went and did like a deep dive on this topic. So if you want to hear like Sean's like extensive thoughts about the Bethesda thing, uh, that's definitely where to go to do that. But of course, Sean, we got to move along because got it. The more so much to talk about this week because there's more Bethesda stuff. Uh, if those wasn't enough. So after the round table, like literally uh, the next day, we got the following games updated with FPS boost, which is the new feature we talked about where it passively increases the frame rate to 60 frames. It basically does it artificially. Um, we got the support for the following games from Bethesda, including Dishonored Definitive Edition, Fallout 4, Fallout 76, Prey and The Elder Scrolls 5 Skyrim. They, this is actually a good list of games, and it's actually interesting. First of all, we had heard about Fallout 4 getting 60 frame support all the way back before the Series X launched, which yeah. is kind of interesting. Like, we got that little, like, quick snippet of, like, spinning around your character screen. And uh, we know that the Fall the Elder Scrolls V had, like, 60 frame support through modding, but it's actually cool now to see it in, a, in a, like, a, an official sense. What mm -hmm. First of all, what do you think about this grouping of games? I think this one's probably a little bit better than the last grouping of games, Sean, but what do you think? Oh, my God. Yeah, what was the... Well, I can't even remember. There was, like, uh, Super Lucky's like Tale, Dogs I think. It was, like, 2 and Super Lucky's Tale and yeah, Far Cry yeah. 4. Well, one of the first things that we talked about when, when, you know, discussing the Bethesda deal was of all the studios, of all the games that could be uh, thrown at uh, FPS boosts, it's like, it's the Bethesda games. They all need it, man. Every single one of these games needs that extra level of support. And, you know, what a week it's been with Xbox and all of the backwards compatibility and all the ways that it's treasuring all of these storied franchises and games and improving them and treating them in a way that, like, it's kind of like, why hasn't it always been this way? You know, mm -hmm. like we have just accepted, I would say like subpar when it comes to compatibility and bringing games forward and everything like that. So 
these games are excellent. They desperately needed it. It only makes sense that they're now running at 60 frames per second now that we've got like this, like it's a beefy machine. I don't know if like we've really had too much conversation about how capable the Series X is, but I think like more and more these these instances are going to start to pop up where the Xbox Series X is going to start pushing games to their absolute limit. And, you know, Digital Foundry did a piece on Prey and they just said like, this is unfounded. This is unprecedented level of of basically like a remaster, like in the, in the truest and most extensive um, extent of the word, it's better load times. It's even more than just the, the, the frame rate. It's also like more responsive as well. Like it's clearing up the, um, the input lag that's happening. Mm-hmm. So dude, like I'm, I'm all in on this stuff. It's, it's actually changing the experience that we have with these games and you, you kind of want to play them again if you haven't already. And if you, or sorry, if, yeah, you want to play them again if you have, and if you haven't already, then, like, what better time? There's nothing else out. So get all these games on Game Pass. They're all looking and playing better. But Fallout 4 is the one that I've kind of mentioned that I I want to I wanna go in and check out because it, it really, really needed this help. Yeah, between that and the loading, which I remember just being, like, atrocious for Fallout a 4. Terrible. Yeah, like, both having both of those things fixed, I think, makes it a much better game. A game like Elder Scrolls V... I don't know how much it really needed. The, the, the I mean, the fra- extra frames helps, but I mean, it was already like a pretty fast loading game. It was already like a th- 360 game anyways. Like you already mm-hmm. weren't spinning that little statue in the menus like you were yeah. back in the 360 days. And Dishonored as well, like I, I think it probably changes the, the pace of that game in an in interesting way. And I'm interested to see how that plays. Um, yeah. But yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head with with uh, what Digital Foundry said about Prey, for example. That was a game that was uh, basically pretty notorious when it first came out on console for yeah. the reasons you mentioned were, again, v- versus the PC version, which was just so much more of a, uh, a a better experience versus the console version. So I'm glad that it's kind of up to par now for anyone who likes to go back and play these games. And again, this just warms my game preservationist heart, Sean. Yeah, Seeing man. this happen because I love seeing old games get better um, especially because, again, most of these games, there's someone out there who's missed them. And it's awesome mm-hmm. to now have like a, a great way to go play them again that is better than the experience that we had when we first played them. So and you don't even have to individually buy them. You don't have to pay for a patch or anything else like that. Like there's so much other crap and there's games. There's like there's remasters on Nintendo that are going away at the end of March. And it's like or there's this way or you could do it this way. It's so much better. I can't <laughs> believe it. Yeah, for sure. And and this reminds me so much of when we got like Xbox One X enhancements for games like games, uh, like even Mm -hmm. original Xbox games, like when we got that batch of of games like this. That's what I thought that was amazing. This is like this is like taking that to the next level. So, yeah, it's incredible for sure. So I'm really excited to see because they talked about how there's going to be even more Bethesda games in the future that are getting this and we're going to be hearing about them soon. Yeah. Um, So I'm really interested to see what games Doom at 120. Yes, I want. (laughs) Oh, my God. I want to I want to see Doom go even beyond the the 60 that they've got right now. That would be incredible, Sean. Well, speaking of Bethesda games, we got more Bethesda game announcements. Oh, my God. This one being all the Bethesda games coming to Game Pass. Now, they put out a list of 20 Bethesda games coming to Game Pass. I'm not going to read that whole list because most of that list consisted of games that were already on Game Pass. So Yeah, it was a little fu- disingenuous, wasn't it? That wasn't really all that, like, a little now bit. they're so, here. Yeah. But the following games are now on Game Pass for the first time, or they're mm. returning after being pulled from the store, because some of these were actually pulled from Game Pass earlier. So we've right. got Dishonored Definitive Edition, Doom, Doom 2, Doom 3, Doom 64, <laughs> The Evil Within, Fallout 4, Prey, The Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind, The Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion, Wolfenstein The New Order, and Wolfenstein The Old Blood. And in fact, of these games, the ones that were actually on Game Pass before were Fallout 4, Prey, mm-hmm. uh, Oblivion, and I think that's it from this list. So yeah, uh, some of these games were already on Game Pass. I'm glad to see them back because they had expired, um, and that was actually one of the reasons why they were pulled off. But having so many games come to Game Pass, Sean, um, it's it's pretty incredible to see the, most of the Bethesda library here. They did talk about as well that the remaining Bethesda legacy titles that are on Xbox will all come to Game Pass at some point. This was just the games that they were able to get onto the service right away. And then yeah. that's going to be coming later. So, and they said we'll be hearing about more Bethesda games coming to Game Pass soon. So if you if your favorite game is in here, don't worry, it's coming. But Sean, what do you think about this list of games? 
Well, I'm wondering about like the strategy or what what the reason for the games that aren't there. If it is a strategy thing or if it's a like I don't know if it's a workload thing. Like I don't I have no idea what it takes to get these games over. But I'd be like those are the those are the reasons I'm fascinated with this this industry of like I would love to know the the behind room conversations or the, the backroom conversations that are happening. Um, but I think the the list is that's enough. You know, <laughs> like I look at that <laughs> list and go, what is that like sixteen thousand hours <laughs> of gameplay between all the Morrowinds and the Fallout's and everything. And, and the Elder Scrolls and whatnot. So, like, I just don't even know where to start. You know, as as celebratory as we are about all of this great news, it's like I, I open that slide on on the store that says Bethesda Softworks Spotlight, and I'm like, dude, I don't even know where to go first. <laughs> it's like there's so many games. Well, but, uh, yeah, like Evil Within is, like, the one that I highlight. That's that, that's my – it's the most underplayed. It's, it, it, it is – insanely creative and completely out there and terrifying it'll chill your bones for months but um yeah very very creative and also just spotlighting tango in that whole like round table thing like that's my that's my call out tango is just an incredible studio and a huge pickup for for xbox in the middle of all of this stuff yeah for sure well sean i'm gonna make you pick a game because oh, we got a question from the audience here we're gonna let fiona mckinnon into the car with us at zeranix and she asks what Bethesda game are you guys going to play first? So, Sean, you can't pick, you don't, you don't know what game to pick first? Well, tough luck. You have to pick a game. Fiona I feel McKinnon like, forces I feel you to like pick it, I feel like in honor of Fiona, I should, I should pick Fallout 76. Fallout 76 would actually be the one, um, but I wanted to have crossplay. My wife won't play with me on Xbox. She'll play on PlayStation. We already have it there. I would love to play Fallout 76. But um, you know what, dude? Like, I was really taken by that um, that Digital Foundry video, and I I think I might be checking out Prey of all of these games. But man, like, there there's how do you pick? Like, yeah. Doom is great. Doom, like, oh, I, there's no way. I don't know. Wolfenstein is calling for some reason. I'm not sure. There's too many good games to pick from, Sean. As for me. What game am I going to play first? I'm going to go play Doom 3 first because uh, Doom 3. When, all, when they did all of the re-releases for all these games, for all the Doom games, that was the one I didn't buy. Um, mm. And I actually own Doom 1 and Doom 2 via 360 backwards compatibility, so I didn't buy those either um, yeah. when they did the re-releases. But So Doom 3, I haven't played that game in forever. So I'm actually really interested to go back to it after all these years and see if it holds up. Um, and I love the Doom games, so I'm excited to play it, even though, again, that one's like a little bit of an outlier. It's more of like a survival horror game and less of a Doom game. Um, yeah. But it's I still remember enjoying it, but not probably more so than old school Doom. But, yeah. Uh, when I first played it, Doom 64, though, is one that I will recommend to people if they've never played it. Yeah, who, definitely. Who like old school Doom games, because it's probably the best old school style Doom game. To go yeah. Back to. Yeah. More, um, yeah. Easiest to go back to for sure. Yeah, like I think that that game's incredible. Also, my my answer would have actually been Morrowind, but I actually did a recent playthrough of it uh, a couple months ago for the Crossroads. So mm -hmm. um, I, I probably won't be going back to it anytime soon. But that's that would have other been my my answer otherwise. If if I didn't go back, if I didn't say Doom three, I think that's probably then the next one to go back to. But Sean. Ryan. If you need more games for Game Pass, guess what? <laughs> Our next story is all about Game Pass and all the games coming to Game Pass. Oh, no. So, I already just got 20. I just told you I couldn't decide between those 20 games. Oh, well, well, crap. Buckle up, Sean, because there's a lot of games. So <laughs> we're, I'm, I'm going to read the list and we're going to talk about them one by one. So first up, all right. Undertale is available right now. Uh, it's new to the console. It was on PC before, but now we have it on Xbox. Mm -hmm. On March 18th, we're getting Empire of Sin. Shout out to Donnie Reese because I know he was excited about that game. Near Automata on PC, Star Wars Squadrons, and Torchlight 3 on PC only on March 18th. And then Genesis Noir and Octopath Traveler on March what? 25th. We'll circle back to that one. Mm -hmm. uh, Pillars of Eternity 2, Deadfire on PC, Superland and Yakuza 6, the Song of Life, all on the same day, March 25th. So one, two, three, four, five games on Game Pass that day. And then to round out the list, Narita Boy on March 30th. And then Outriders just recently announced April 1st on Game Pass. Whew. Good God. There's so many we games, have, Sean. We have, what, like 13 days to get through all of those games before Outriders comes out on uh, on April 1st, man. Oh, oh, what? <sighs> but uh, Sean, Spencer. I heard there's no games on Xbox. I heard that's I heard a rumor about that. There's no games on Xbox. I mean, 
this is the, the great thing about you know with backwards compatibility, and we'll get to this list of games too. It's just like it does. The game doesn't have to be brand new, and I feel like there's so like that just jives with how a lot of people play games. Not everybody plays games like we do because we create the content, but a lot of people like they don't. You don't need to play the latest greatest thing, and even just saying latest greatest, it's not that it is the greatest. It's just whatever's come out la- came out last. There are so <laughs> many amazing experiences here. Where do you want to start, man? So I'm going to start with the top of the list with Undertale. Again, this mm. just came to the store um, yesterday. Um, this was a game that I love on PC, and I know a lot of people have heard of Undertale, but not everyone's had a chance to play Undertale. Again, I haven't played it. Came it came to P- PC before, and then it came to PlayStation, and then I I can't remember if it came to Switch at some point. I think it did. Yeah. Um, so I think now it's finally gotten to Xbox. It's finally got through all the other platforms it need to get through before it finally came to Xbox. It's, it's a really fantastic like 8-bit RPG from Toby Fox uh, and it's very much like Earthbound so if you like games like Earthbound or like really weird RPGs then I think you're going to really love Undertale it's got great writing it's got fantastic music music I know the music music. I've watched streams on it it looks that sounds really good yeah yeah Hmm. so I mean Undertale a fantastic game probably my favorite game from this list that we're going to talk about wow if y'all have never played undertale and you like old school rpgs and you've missed it somehow you should definitely play it because i highly recommend undertale so you never played it at all no but this is one of the well and i don't know if there's a question about this but like this is a game that um i would have bought probably but it's kind of like one of those it looks like a game pass game and then sure enough like totally is a game pass game um so yeah i've been kind of like secretly kind of like waiting for it or at the very least like to come down in price but my entire like approach to buying especially indie games has been totally changed i think like a lot of other people uh through game pass so this is a this will be a timing thing but i've heard such accolades for this game that yeah how can you ignore when when it lands on the game pass it seems yeah. like a really good fit especially because too like uh, even someone like me who has played it before it's been about a year and a half since it's I last been. played it. Like I have the pl- the platinum for it on PlayStation. So I'm actually really excited to go back and get all the achievements on uh, Undertale. And just that alone yeah. just gives me another reason to replay like a, a game that I already love. So mm-hmm. I'm so happy to finally see it on Xbox and also to get in more into the hands of people that, that might have missed it before. It's also on PC Game Pass now, too. So right. uh, if you have a PC only, you can go play it there. Although obviously it's been out on PC for like five years now. So. Uh, you probably have played it there already. Uh, next one I want to touch on real quick, Star Wars Squadrons. We knew yes. this was coming to Game Pass, but we didn't have a date for it. Um, and this was a game I know that you played the trial for at launch, but you didn't end up picking it up. Are you going to maybe circle back to this one, Sean, now that that you'll have access to full, the full game now? Here's the deal, Ryan Turford. I think uh, this might be Community Night style stuff man i think i think we can get a lot of us uh jumping in flying our x wings our b wings our whatever wings um i think yes yes but i but i say with that like i want to play with people i think that's going to be like the secret sauce of this game i don't know that i would really want to play with just a bunch of random people with Mm. every this is the power of game pass we can all play the same multiplayer games at the same time this is why halo saturdays work so well because we all have master chief collections so yeah, man, I'm, uh, I, and it is funny, like, that that trial thing is interesting because it gives you a little bit, but it, it didn't give me enough to really, like, commit myself to the game. Now I've got access to the full game. It does change things a little bit for me, I think. Mm-hmm. And I will recommend out there, uh, for those that haven't played it as well, the campaign for it is fantastic. So I yeah. definitely think uh, playing through the full campaign, I think it's going to be fun for people on on its own. Uh, and the multiplayer, I think, is pretty fun. But yeah, with I'm with you on that. Where the the multiplayer itself is squadron based, and you, there, it requires a lot of coordination to be good. Mm-hmm. So you're gonna want to play with friends, with mics, preferably. We so, need um, what are they called? We need cosigns. We need what are, what they call us call signs. We need yeah, we need special like red call five, signs. For, mm-hmm. red leader, gold leader, red, all, mm-hmm. all, all those all those uh, call signs from Star Wars. Moose leader, yeah, moose, moose leader. rider, moose rider. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of that one. Uh, <laughs> next one I want to touch on. <laughs> Octopath Traveler. What? what? <laughs> March 25th, Octopath Traveler comes to Xbox for the very first time after being a I Switch exclusive it. for years. For yeah. years, this was exclusive to Switch. It also is out on PC as well. So uh, most people had actually forgotten that it's actually on PC. It's also on phones. It's not on PlayStation for some reason, which is bizarre when they did this announcement. It's only on yes. Xbox, which is a weird thing. Uh, but how excited are you or for Octopath Traveler finally coming to Xbox, Sean? Well, I'm, let me throw it back to you really quickly. I'm obviously very excited. I'm like, 
was this something that you were hearing on your Final Fantasy XIV podcast? Like, what? Nobody was expecting this unless you heard something that I no, didn't. I, no, right? no one knew this was coming at all, as far as I know of. Unless, unless maybe Jeff Grubb knew, but he wasn't maybe saying. <laughs> I don't actually <laughs> know. Uh, you probably yeah, did. No, I don't think anyone saw this one coming. It just came out of nowhere. Not only that, but like Square Enix didn't even post an announcement about this. It was literally just on the Xbox wire as part of this Game Pass Crazy. announcement. Crazy. I, just announcing the game was even coming to the console at all. Like I had given up hope that it was coming to any other console. Like I thought it was going to stay console exclusive for switch forever. That means that you even had hope. Like I never even had a hope. It just wasn't even a consideration. It was like that game was on switch and that's where it was going to stay. And it's a, it's an absolutely gorgeous game. It's the type of thing that like, I'm really hoping that Xbox fans start to dive in on. I know our friend Garrett Bland loves these types of games. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's a, we're starting to see more and more of this and the, the, the friendship and the relationship partnership with uh, Square Enix continues to get stronger. This Outriders thing and Project Octopath, it's like, hmm, I can't remember who said it, but I'm, I'm not speaking from my own mind here. But those uh, those conversations that Phil Spencer's having over over in Japan, they seem to be paying off. And that's very, very exciting just because we, it's been such a gap for so long. We, We've also been hearing rumblings to earlier today from a number of sources, too, that Sega wants to get back in on this action. Apparently, they have a popular series that they want to bring the Game Pass and Xbox for the first time. So I'm like really Persona? interested to see what that is. It you think it's Persona? Persona? I think it actually might be, but we'll see. Can I'm not you getting my imagine? Hopes up. Can I'm you not, imagine? Well, I'm not hopes getting my hopes up. up yet, but mm, I really, really bit. hope. I, I mean, that up. goes back to my prediction during the prediction show, Sean, but enough about that. Um, I'm so excited to see Octopath Traveler on there. And again, I've been looking for a reason to go back to this game. I loved it on Switch and having it on Xbox with achievements. Sign me up. Like, I'm going to play yeah, this game again. It's yeah. going to be amazing. Um, and then other than that, again, Outriders, I know everyone's kind of excited about. We talked about that earlier. Uh, but does anything else on this list kind of stand out to you before mm. we move on, John? Um, I don't have it in front of me. I don't think so. Anything for you? I don't think no, so. No, not really. For me. But I'm going to go to Tony Baker's question, though, because Tony Baker okay. had a, a question in relation to this. So Tony Baker at Tony Baker 86 asks, with Game Pass just exploding with content these days, Seriously. how does the Xbox drive crew decide what to play? I need <laughs> strategies. I need advice. So many games. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ryan, you, you got to jump on this first, man. I, I am a disaster when it comes to this. And Tony you knows that. This. He's he's poking he's poking at me. You see this, but Sean, my strategy is, well, I pretty much have infinite time to play games. So it almost doesn't matter to me. I don't need to formulate a plan. I'm like, I just play what I want. That's kind of, mm. that's kind of always been my thing where it's like, what am I, what am I in the mood for? Like, yeah, I'll just play that. And that's kind of always been my, uh, my game playing strategy because again, I work from home, uh, as many of y'all mm. know. Um, and honestly, when I'm not working, Anytime I'm not working or sleeping, it's time I can find to play games. Of course, I don't just play games all the time, but at the same time, I have the luxury of time on my hands. So uh, I that's how I play like so many large games, because I, I usually don't worry about it. So that that's my strategy. I know that's not helpful to a lot of people, but that's that's what happens when you're a 30. You that, Tony? Yeah, that's what happens when you're a 37 year old man with no responsibilities. So Sean, <laughs> with someone as someone with responsibilities, tell me what you, how you kind of strategize. Cause you okay. definitely have to think about this a little. Oh my God. I think about it way too much. Okay. So I don't know if this is actually going to be helpful, but one of the things, and, and Tony knows this about me and Ryan, you know this too. One of the things I've actually done is written out a list. I write out a list of all the games and sometimes it's literally dozens. I've had a list of up to 64 games, maybe even more. And I put them into a tournament bracket at <laughs> challenge.com or something. It's a, it's like a challenge, like a challenge type of deal. You can search it tournament bracket. Uh, and it's really there for like, if you're like hosting like a, like a hockey tournament or something like that. But I put the games in there and I kind of just like pit them one against another until you eventually have like single elimination where they you have a, a winner sometimes i would have the community vote on this on which game should go first but i've sort of done it in my own personal time there too right <laughs> i go like do i want to play octopath or do i want to play prey or do i want to play uh outer worlds or fallout 4 and those types of things um that's part of it that's that's one thing is very involved and ridiculous and probably nobody will ever do that because i'm insane um the other thing too is like a lot of times it's what is just coming out. So Outriders mm. just popped up and that's kind of something that, um, that I'm at. Um, and I think it's kind of complicated for me too. Cause I play on PC as well. You know, I've been chatting about this. I don't 
necessarily always want to be sitting at my PC, even mm-hmm. though like I would really like to continue playing Tales of Berseria, probably just want to like sit on my couch. So I don't know, man. It's a little bit of back and forth. I, I really, really have been trying not to worry about this too much, but as the year gets on, it gets harder, man. So it's, it's a little bit of a mix. There's not really a great strategy that I have, but, um, yeah, just trying to, what I'm really trying to do, Ryan, is like, just play what sounds like fun right now. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's what I'm, that's where I'm going anyway. That's a good strategy. I think it's just the, for the most part, as long as you're playing what you enjoy, it almost doesn't matter. It, like yeah. if you miss out of games, you miss out on them. It's not a big deal. Also, again, a lot of it has to do with like, if there's a game we're playing together, like that's going to get, Oh, big well. time. So yeah, um, that's going to have a lot to do with it. But Sean, we got to zoom through the rest of these questions because we got to go soon. So let's let some of our friends in the car with us. It's time for the carpool. We're going to start with Seamus McIsaac at Famous Seamus, and he asks, so what are games that you would like to get an FPS boost? And I know you said Forza Horizon 3 and Fallout New Vegas. Why those games, Sean? Fallout 3, well, I'm sorry, um, Forza Horizon 3. I went back to it recently, and it's like, it's just too bad that that game is probably not going to get uh, like an enhancement for Series X or anything like that. But because there's, there's now is such a huge difference when you go play, especially a racing game um, between back then and now. I'd like to see that get a little bit of an enhancement. And Fallout 3, I'm hoping, because that game is actually, it's such a core Fallout game. They didn't add any of the base building. Um, but Fallout 3, when it comes eventually, I'd like to see that there as well. Nice. But how about nice. you, man? Um, honestly, for FPS boost games, I a lot of them actually are not, current gen games like i want to see more fps boost games from previous gens so 360 titles i think or uh, like banjo kazooie those games would be good yeah like or even something like perfect dark on, on the, like the oh three, definitely the xbox 360 port um or just some of the older games on xbox like even the original xbox games like splinter cell the original splinter cell games i'd love to see them get like fps boost like Pl- nice. sam fisher sneaking around at 60 frames per second i think mm-hmm. would be pretty cool um so that's more along the lines of the the type of fps boost games that i would like to see because again like a lot of the games i would normally think of like resident evil 2 um or a lot of shooters or fighting games like we've already got a lot of those at 60 frames or have gotten like the ones I would have asked for. Yeah. Just got updates like destiny or, uh, borderlands. I know like borderlands probably would have been one of my picks, but those oh, all good got one. 60 frames per second. Yeah, base, hand- so were they, yeah. were they 60 on the handsome collection? Yeah. They so were. Yeah. yeah. And then when they did the borderlands one re-release, that's also 60, 60 frames as well. Right. Um, and then of course, borderlands three with the enhancements also is too. So, mm-hmm. um, that, that might've been my pick before, but yeah. So, I mean, most of the one, current gen ones that I can think of, have been kind of crossed off. Um, but yeah, the, the older gen games, like backwards compatible games from 360 or original Xbox, like those are the ones that I, I would look more towards. But right. Enough about that. Next question from Brent on discord and Brent asks, would you rather the Bethesda team that works on Fallout did Fallout 5 or worked on a new shooter-style RPG? Mm. So obviously we know they're working on Starfield right now. And yep. then Elder Scrolls 5 or Elder Scrolls 6. But yep. do if they if it came back to doing Fallout, would you rather them see, do Fallout or maybe a new IP, Sean? No, I want Fallout again. No, definitely. I feel like they were testing a lot of new ideas with Fallout 4. I want to see those refined and really to take that that, that franchise to the next level. I don't... They have so many other studios. We're, we're going to get new stuff from everybody else. I, I would like Fallout to continue on. I think that should be a staple in gaming. And or, at the very least... Um, maybe take it into a different genre or even like take it back to its, to its roots would, I think would be interesting, but there could be expansions of fallout. Um, but I would like fallout five to be what you would expect. I think from, um, from a sequel in that series, but how about you? Yeah, I'm in the same camp where I would love to see them maybe do like a fallout five. Cause again, like fallout four, other than the base building, I thought it was a fantastic game. Like I didn't personally love the base building stuff in fallout yeah. four, but, but it didn't really get in I, your I like- way. Right. Like it didn't necessarily like I think that's the, I just that's didn't the like common. the sections where it was forced. Like there was sure. a one section towards the end of the game, for example, where you had to gather a whole right. bunch of materials and put this giant robot together. And I personally mm-hmm. just didn't love that. Um, but I know it, it, that I'm kind of in the minority in that camp. And I know a lot of people like that stuff. Yeah. Um, but and I would like to see them do another kick at the can with Fallout. But more than anything, I just want them to do what they want to do. Like if they will, if if they're not if their heart's not in it, then I don't want them to be forced to do another Fallout game. Sure. Um, like we talk about it all the time with us creating our own content or just content creation in general. Like if you're not passionate it in, about it, but do it in Canada, 
do follow it in Canada. Make, make like maybe there's a vault up here that that you could that you could have. I'd be scared be of the giant moose, radioactive moose that you'd have to. My watch God, that would be amazing. And the or beavers, the like geese. the the beavers and the geese and the moose all fighting. Oh my gosh, the rate the rad scorpions fighting the the rad beaver. <laughs> Nature's Ryan. coming to get you. That'll be the, the tagline. Fallout 5, nature's coming to get you. Dude, when go. that beaver slapped his tail on the water, it would be supersonic. You'd have like a you'd have a shockwave. My At God. least it'd be safer in, in Fallout Canada than it probably would be in like Fallout Australia. <laughs> with all kinds of like with all the, the crazy things that'll kill you there already. Like well in Canada like in Canada, Ryan, they were building the vaults just for people to survive the winter, let alone the nuclear winter. We were just trying to like, you know, have a nice have a bunker to settle yeah. in on. Exactly. All right. We got to speed through these last two questions. Next up, Joey Splats at Joey Splats asks a lot of news this week is about older games coming to Game Pass. And I have been playing a few older games and it got me thinking, do people underrate backwards compatibility? Yes, to your to the answer to your question, Joey, I think people totally underrate the power of backwards compatibility on both Microsoft and Sony side, I think, mm -hmm. uh, because I think that even though we played a lot of these games because uh, we're the type of people who pick them up right away. We talked about it a little bit earlier, but I think that um, old, an old game may be old to us, but it's going to be new to someone who hasn't played it before. Mm -hmm. um, so I do think there's a lot of power that comes with that. Um, Sean, do you have anything to say about the specific subject before we move yeah, on? Yeah, well, I would only add that just I feel like that's changing because normally I would say yes, most definitely, and it's always been that way, but like all of this like love and appreciation for all of these games that are now available on Game Pass, like I feel like that tide and that opinion that has been so stubborn over the last I guess forever I feel like that's changing man more people are actually speaking up like Joey to say hey this is pretty awesome like these games are really good and also like without any effort on anybody's part or dollars that have to be spent it's like the game actually runs better so yeah. that maybe has been the missing piece for backwards compatibility is is you you play an old game it's like this feels like shit you know and it's like now it's not necessarily that case. It's actually better. So, yeah, I think it's changing. I think X Xbox is doing more than just, you know, these games are available to you. They're, they're taking that extra step, which is already the extra step. They're going well ab above and beyond that to make sure that it's a, it's a place people want to want to be and play games. You could say they're going the extra mile. They are, are going the extra mile. I could say that. The extra kilometer even. Next up, Gary Gray at It's Only Gary asks... To say that games like Undertale and Octopath Traveler are hitting Game Pass this week, do you th guys think that uh, games being on other consoles first for a year or so really matters when they are on Game Pass a year later? Does it damage the hype too much for these games? What do you think about this? So I, I, if a game is, is exclusive on another platform, do I really think that it hurts it to come to Game Pass a year later? No. In fact, I think it actually helps the game. Uh, like Big time. I talked about, we talked about this last week when kind of discussing our, our predictions for what Bethesda would do. And likewise, if they were one year timed exclusive to Xbox and then they came out on play, PlayStation a year later, that that wouldn't bug me either. Like, yeah. I, I don't think it kills the hype for the game. Like, I think what that does is that a year later, like not as many people care about that game. So in a way it helps them sell more copies of it and actually makes more money that way. Um, mm -hmm. And likewise with it coming to game pass a year later, kind of the opposite end of that spectrum. I think it's only going to help the game because I think that That's for example, Octopath Traveler isn't going to be on game pass forever. Spoiler alert. It'll probably be there for a year and then Square Enix will probably pull it because they do that with all of their games when on game pass. Um, so I think you're going to have to buy it eventually. So more people are probably going to buy this game than they did before because they're going to buy it when it leaves game pass, I think. So um, mm. I think it'll actually add to the sales of Octopath Traveler. Probably like we might even see a spike of sales because we tend to see a spike of sales whenever games come to game pass. Yeah. But that's, that's just what I think about that subject. What do you think, Sean? Yeah, no, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that one. Um, I don't, yeah, like who does it hurt? I, the only thing I was kind of alluding to this a little bit earlier is like me, like personally, I've been sort of almost like trained to just like not buy games on day one. So maybe that's what Gary's getting at, but I don't yeah. know, man, like it, 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 these, these things we've just seen time and time again, developers are, are lauding uh, Xbox game pass for giving it access to players and giving it a boost where you're not expecting it, all the things that you kind of said. So I feel like where one, one area might be lacking, it's being made up in all sorts of other areas. I totally anticipate outriders being an example where um, it's going to sell well on, on other platforms, you know, on PlayStation and PC because people are talking about it because it's coming to game pass and that yeah. happens across the board as you mentioned. So yeah, I don't know. There's no way that it, I don't know. I don't think that there's any way that this hurts it. 
Yeah, I don't think so either. And last question real quick from Blaze Knight at Blaze Knight 0923. He asks, with all the Game Pass Xbox hype of late, do you think that the Xbox brand can realistically dethrone Nintendo slash Sony in profits in the gaming market this console generation, including PC and cloud gaming platforms and ultimately stake the Xbox stigma? Why or why not? Honestly, Blaze Knight, I don't think so. Like, I think that Game Pass, yes, there's a lot of Game Pass subscribers, but we already know that in a lot of ways, Game Pass is not like this money making machine that people think it is. I think what what Game Pass does that makes sense for Microsoft is number one, gives them a reliable uh, source of income, but also it gets people to buy, try out and pl- buy more games, I think. So, um, yes, I th- do think people are going to end up buying more and more games on the Xbox platform that maybe they did before and putting more money into Game Pass. But I don't really see them reaching at least Nintendo levels of, of profit, especially with how crazy the switch has been doing. But Sean, do you, do you have anything to say otherwise? What was, what was the last, was there something about the last part of his question that I thought was really interesting that I, cause I don't necessarily like, I don't, I don't know that I even want to jump in on or even uh, it's, it's, it's being flippant for me to say like, I don't care who has more money. Like that's not really what I'm, what I'm after. But I feel like there was part of the last question, last part of the question that he said. That well, he's was talking like, about shaking the Xbox stigma. The fact that's that, you it. Know. Yes. Yes. And that's what I think is most important is that like, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't care who has the most money in the bank. Like Microsoft won that before they even got into games. Um, but I do think that this is finally, we're starting to see this. Like people going like, I saw Chris Berto going like, I'm selling my PlayStation. Like, I don't even know why I have that thing. Like, there's so many games to be playing and, and Game Pass makes it so easy that yes. And that is ultimately as a, as a fan of the, of the platform and as somebody who plays on it and wants to play with other people, that's where we get a little bit maybe territorial. I just want to have like more people to play with. So Crossplay helps that and, and Game Pass helps us as well and, and creates more people in that community. That's what I want out of this. And I think they're achieving that for sure. Yeah. For sure. All right, we got to go, Sean. Before we go, Sean plugs go. Um, you can find me on the internet at uh, Sean Capri, Sean like Connery, Capri like the pants. Please follow me on Twitter, and you can support this show. You can throw us a, a buck or two or ten at patreoncom Capri. and I am streaming on maybe Thursdays, but definitely Fridays and Saturdays at twitchtv Capri. As for me, you can find me on Twitter at Ryan Turford. You can also find us on Twitter at the Xbox Drive, on YouTube at youtube.com slash the Xbox Drive, and on podcast services around the globe. But for Sean Capri, I'm Ryan Turford. This has been episode 181 of the Xbox Drive. It's a chat palindrome, folks, and we're out. Bye. That was such an amazing episode. I had a lot of fun recording this episode with Ryan Turford, and now I'm going to go home to see my kids. I just got back from the chiropractor, and I get my back fixed, and I'm feeling so much better, and I hope you enjoyed the show. Bye. Thank you.